lot of talk already tonight about it, and I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm very unlikely to be able to give you a comprehensive definition. If you listen to Zach, uh, Mohammed, who founded Islam, was a sort of prototype of a just especially benevolent town councillor in the region of Fife. If you listened to him, you would get the impression that it was a pure arrangement of a few minimal issues of governance and so on. Now, that isn't the case. Islam is many, many things. It's many complex things. It's not easy to sum it up. It is a religion, however, and it is possible to sum it up to some extent. My own favorite definition is that there are, in, a sen in essence, three Islams. There is the Islam of the origins, that is the texts, the Quran and the Hadith, the sayings, and indeed the early lives of Muhammad. There is the second Islam, the way in which that has been extrapolated out over the centuries in the body of law known as the Sharia. And there is a third Islam that we often mean when we talk about Islam, which is what do Muslims believe, how do Muslims live. Now these are... Hey Viral City, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl over more, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today, guys, I'm going to be reacting to modern wisdom, and we have Douglas Murray School's young Oxford student about Islam and leaves Oxford Union speechless. Wow. So this is Douglas Murray and Islam is about to tell us about Islam, and I cannot wait to get into the video. But before we get started, some amazing people watching us for the first time. If you're new to the channel, I I'm Vera, I do reaction videos. If this is something that you love, why not join Vera CT? Use the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that, guys, let's go. Very, very deep waters, but there isn't any point in seeing deep waters unless you plunge straight in. Zach said in his comments that we must return to Islam's religious values. But the problem is that Zach's version of Islam's religious values is going to be very different from a lot of other people's. And let me put this point to you at its hardest, but I think it's necessary and it's truthful. Groups like ISIS have the worst possible interpretation of Islam. It should go without saying. But they have the worst possible interpretation of Islam for Muslims and for non-Muslims. However, it is an interpretation of the texts that they have. It is a valid interpretation of the lessons they take from the life of Muhammad. It is a possible interpretation of the texts and traditions they have in front of them. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, that Muhammad was not Buddha. He did not live his life as Buddha. The world would be a lot more peaceable if he did, but it wasn't the case. I know that Shabir said in his comments that he doesn't want us to get into comparisons with other religions, but it might just be necessary. Consider the history of, Islam, of, of Christianity, ladies and gentlemen. The history of Christianity, goodness knows, has been bloody. Would it have been more bloody or less bloody if on even one occasion, when one of Jesus' disciples comes to him and says, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times, or 70 times seven. If instead of saying, forgive him endlessly, which is what Jesus ends up saying, he'd have said, chop off his head. <laughs> what would have happened to the history of Christianity if even on one occasion, when a woman is brought to Jesus, found in adultery, instead of saying, he who is without sin cast the first stone, said, stone her? I think we can all agree. We should. Yeah, I get what he's talking about there. Christianity is all about love. It's all about love. Jesus said, how many times, someone asked Jesus that, how many times should we forgive anyone who's sin against? He said, 70 times, 7 times a day. Calculate it. It means keep forgiving, forgiving, and forgiving. The same way, when they, want, they said, this woman is a sinner, blah, blah, blah. And he said, let's eat who is it without sin. Be the first to cast a stone. If it's with the Islam, I'm sorry to say, the Rabbi that stood out to death. It's when he said against you, cut off his head. Christianity is all about love, compassion. But Islam, I am so sorry. I cannot say the same for Islam. I have nothing against Islam. I have Muslim colleagues. I have nothing against them. But this time around, 
let's say facts let's spill let's talk facts without micing words i love douglas movie because he's always so straightforward and he speaks the facts let's go on should all be able to agree, in a place like this, the history of Christianity would have been bloodier. So it is with Islam. And I know that in a house like this, in this particular era, it's necessary to pretend that some people believe in Christianity, some people believe in Islam, some people do yoga, and that there isn't very much difference between them. There is, Douglas Murray and argues the that to truly understand matter. a religion and its potential for peace or violence, one must evaluate the life and teachings of its founder. Murray compares Islam to Christianity, highlighting the stark differences between Jesus and Muhammad, and asserts that these differences have profound implications for the followers of each religion. Murray begins by acknowledging that evil can be committed in the name of any religion. History is replete with examples of atrocities carried out under religious banners, whether Christian, Muslim, or otherwise. However, he insists that it is crucial to look at the founders of these religions to understand their core messages and values. Jesus Christ, the founder of Christianity, is known for his teachings of love, forgiveness, and peace. He preached turning the other cheek, loving one's enemies, and forgiving those who wrong us. Jesus never led armies or waged wars. His message was one of spiritual salvation and moral mm -hmm. integrity. In stark contrast, Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was a warlord, Historical records from Islamic sources, such as the Hadith and the Sirah, biographies of Muhammad, describe his involvement in numerous battles and military campaigns. Muhammad led his followers in armed conflicts against various tribes and cities, expanding his influence through both diplomacy and warfare. The wow. The truth is I never knew that. Wow. So Islam, actually, their, their, their leader... Muhammad <laughs> actually led wars. No wonder Islam, Islam's they are so. No wonder the Muslims are so violent. That's why they are violent. Now I get it. So they actually led. He actually led wars. He fought. But oh gosh, Jesus never did any of that. Oh, now I understand. I think I now understand better. Gosh. The early Islamic community under Muhammad's leadership engaged in actions that included the beheading of prisoners, the subjugation of tribes, and the imposition of Islam through conquest. This difference in the founder... So you mean they beheaded prisoners? Gosh. They beheaded prisoners. Ha. This is, this is my first time hearing this, honestly. I had no idea. Why, why do they still have followers? Why are people still... This is clearly violence. What? Let's go. ...approaches has significant implications for their respective religions. Christianity, following the example of Jesus, has a strong emphasis mm -hmm. on peace and forgiveness. While Christians have certainly committed acts of violence, these actions are often seen as deviations from the teachings of Christ. On the other hand, the actions of Muhammad as a military leader and lawmaker are integral to the Islamic tradition. His life serves as a model for Muslims, and his military strategies and governance methods are studied wow. and emulated. Statistics and modern examples further support Murray's argument. A study by the Pew Research Center found that a significant proportion of Muslims in certain countries support the implementation of Sharia law, which includes provisions for corporal punishment and the subjugation of non-Muslims. This legal framework is derived directly from the Quran and the Hadith, reflecting the practices established by Muhammad. In contrast, contemporary Christian movements that advocate for violence or theocratic rule are typically fringe and widely condemned by mainstream Christian denominations. Prominent critics have echoed Murray's concerns. Ayan Hirsi Ali, a former Muslim and outspoken critic of Islam, argues that the violent aspects of Muhammad's life and teachings are not just historical artifacts, but are actively influencing contemporary Islamist movements. In her book Heretic, she calls for a reformation within Islam, urging Muslims to critically examine and reform those elements of their tradition that are incompatible with modern values of human rights and equality. Furthermore, 
Islamic reformers themselves have recognized the need to address these issues. For instance, Mayajid Nawaz, a former Islamist and now a reform advocate, has spoken extensively about the need for Muslims to reinterpret and contextualize the violent aspects of their scripture and history. He argues that a literal and uncritical adherence to all aspects of Muhammad's life is incompatible with the principles of modern, pluralistic societies. Hello. Um, for my dedication, can I just ask two questions, please? Yeah. Um, it's on. So, wow. Now this, or uh, this is making sense. This is now making sense. The Muslims are what? That's the justification for Boko Haram. That's why they are killing people. They are killing the non-Muslims because this is what their their master did in the Quran. So they are emulating him. Thank God I'm not a Muslim. At this point, thank God I am not a Muslim. Let's go on. The first question I wanted to ask is, to what extent do you distinguish between how a, defi a, a term can be defined and the worst form of interpretation? So for example, if I say, or, and, I, and I admire the fact that I support a secular state, does that mean I should advocate the worst interpretation of secularism, such as becoming a Soviet supporting Soviet Union. Second question I want to ask is um, to what extent would you distinguish, um, as you rightly say, the British Muslims being very anti-homosexual um, um, as being tribal, following tribal cultures from South Asia or because um, we know that that type of idea of killing homosexuality, being anti-homosexual, is not just restricted to Muslims in South Asia, but also Hindus in South Asia, Sikhs in South Asia, and Christians in African countries. Thank you. <coughs> well, um, it's a very good question. I'm sorry I had so much to get through that I had to leave you with a numb arm, uh, but um, thank you for persevering. Uh, on the first of those things, no, I think that actually what the other side, by the way, did this evening was actually to essentialize Western culture. We hear a lot about the essentializing of Islam, very little about the essentializing of our culture. Immediately, Tariq Ramadan and others go on to colonialism and so on. It's as if the history of countries like ours is only one of colonialism. It's as if the rest of what we've achieved is as nothing. As for your second question... Uh, this is another way to evade it. I don't know any Jew or Christian who doesn't deny chapters in Leviticus, okay? But I find it very, very commonplace, as we had this evening, that people ignore that the hadith, the sayings of Muhammad, are pretty strong on the matter of what you do about the gays. <coughs> so if we were to arrive at some kind of process of moving beyond that, you would have to start, wouldn't you, by saying, well, the, the, the main, the authoritative books and collections of Bukhari Hadith of Muhammad are not gay liberation documents any more than their women's liberation documents. You would start by admitting that, but we always go around the other way. We always go, no, it's, it's, a, it's a specific, it's a cultural thing. It, 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 it's, it's, it's not to do with religion, it's to do with a, a particular tribal thing. Often then, it's, uh, as we hear quite often about uh, uh, this, uh, it's that the, the British and other colonial powers imported homophobia uh, to the Muslim world, which otherwise was just great with us gays. And this also is not, not a, uh, an accurate interpretation. So, I, as I say, I would urge that uh, of Muslims in debating subjects like this admit what's in the texts and get beyond them fast. But uh, I'm not a Muslim. They have to do the job themselves. I just hope they do. Douglas Murray points out that the West's commitment to values such as gender equality and gay rights is in direct conflict with certain Islamic teachings. For instance, in many Islamic countries, women face severe restrictions on their freedoms. They may be required to dress modestly, often enforced by law, and are frequently subjected to male guardianship systems that limit their autonomy. Saudi Arabia, for example, only recently allowed women to drive and still imposes strict dress codes and travel restrictions on women without male permission. These practices are often justified using Islamic texts, such as the Quran and Haiti, which prescribes specific roles and behaviors for women. Similarly, the treatment of gay people in Islamic countries is a significant human rights issue. Homosexuality is illegal in many Muslim-majority countries and can be punishable by death in places like Iran and Saudi Arabia. 
These laws are rooted in Islamic teachings that condemn same-sex relationships. The severe penalties and societal discrimination faced by gay people in these regions starkly contrast with the increasing acceptance and legal protections for these communities in the West. While it is undoubtedly true that the vast majority of Muslims are peaceful and law-abiding citizens, this argument fails to address the problematic aspects of Islamic doctrine that inspire extremist behavior. Radical groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda explicitly cite Islamic texts to justify their actions, including violence against non-believers, the subjugation of women, and the execution of gay people. Ignoring or downplaying these doctrinal issues prevents an honest discussion about the root causes of extremism. Anyways, I love the fact that Islam is against gays, <laughs> but I don't like the fact that the execution of gay people, that one is, that one is extreme, is too extreme, like execute them. <laughs> you don't have to execute them, but then I'm not a fan of gays in LGBTQ community, whatever they call themselves. So yeah, so I agree with Islam on that one. I don't like the the LGBTQ community is crap to me, so I feel like it should be scrapped. So it's good as it's been scrapped, all right. But then this is something about Saudi Arabia. Women are not allowed to drive, so women are just like slaves. Is that what you guys are saying? The only job of a woman is to be in the kitchen. I'm so women will not be allowed to to work. A woman shouldn't wouldn't work. The role of a woman is to just stay at home. Take care of your children. That's all. You can't be somebody great. You can't have a bright future as a woman. You have to worship your husband. He's God over your life. I don't quite understand. Why won't women be allowed to drive? And women cannot travel out without male permission. Honestly, this is making my head ache. The most shocking thing about today <laughs> is the fact that islam actually promotes violence even in their quran the truth is that i had no idea muhammad was a warlord ha huh. no wonder they are taking after him whereas jesus was a sweet soul jesus never killed anybody even the the, the soldier that caught jesus Oh, they caught a soldier's ear, right? Jesus gummed the guy's ear back. So they want to kill you. They want to kill you. They caught the man here. You, you took his ear and put it back. It was Muhammad. He would have killed the man. He would have killed that soldier. He cannot even gum his ear. Once they caught the soldier here, he would just carry this sword. Mm. He would have killed the soldier. In fact, he would have ordered them. Kill all of them. It was Muhammad. Now, I can see the difference. It's so glaring. The difference between Islam and Christianity. Christianity is a religion of peace. A religion of peace. Love. Compassion. While Islam is the opposite. What are your thoughts on this? What do you guys think about this video? Drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a huge thumbs up. And please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, join via CC. Hit the subscribe button below to know the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that, guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.